Let's look here at something interesting. I have three functions drawn. The lower one right here is x squared. The one in the middle is x. The upper one right here is root x. If you were to look at these individually in terms of pairs, what do I have? I have this y equals x, then I have this x squared. Here's x squared and here's x. And I'm looking here again at another representation, x, and then I have a root x. Absent any exaggeration in my drawing, this point right here, the intersection of all three is always 1, 1. This area right here between x and x squared and this area between root x and x will be equal to one another. This integral will call it a, this will call it b. The a integral, if you were to do its area, you're going from 0 to 1. You have an upper function, which is an x, lower function, x squared, dx. The b integral will be what? 0 to 1. You have upper function, which is root x. I'll write that as x to the 1 or 2. Lower function, which is x, dx. Compute these. The antiderivative here is an x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3. You have upper limit 1 and a 0. Take this to completion. Lower limit 0 is meaningless. You have 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3. What will that be? That will be a 1 over 6. That's area A, which you see right over here. Take this now to completion. I have x to the 1 over 2 plus 1 divided by 1 over 2 plus 1. This will be x to the 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2 minus x squared over 2. You're putting an upper limit 1 and a 0. Bring this to completion. I have a 2 over 3 minus 1 over 2. What do you have over here? You have a common denominator 6, 4 minus 3, which is 1 over 6. Area A is equal to 1 over 6. Area B is equal to 1 over 6. And this is exactly what it is. This right here is 1 over 6. This here is 1 over 6. You're seeing that this function y equals x serves as a good dividing between or a good separation between these two separate areas which are equal to one another.